So how does Nahida work? In this video, we're going to be explaining all of her talents, passives, and all of her kit. So yeah, let's begin. All right, so starting off with her auto attacks, they're going to be just like normal catalyst auto attacks. They're going to have an average scaling, you can say, and they look pretty good, especially her charge attack. It looks very, very good. But yeah, they're just going to be like dendro auto attacks, and they're going to be applying dendro. That's it. Um, You might want to use them sometimes. You want to use Nahida on field. You'd want to be auto attacking with her in that case. But yeah, that's it. Now for her elemental skill, which is one of the most important things in her kit, you can either hold it or tap it. There is not really a big difference. When you tap it, it's going to do like a hit and then it's going to mark eight enemies. It's going to leave like a dendro mark on them. It's like Child's Riptide. It's not exactly like it. I know a lot of people saying they'll compare them and stuff like that, but I'm just giving you an example to understand like how it's going to work. But yeah, it's going to leave like a mark on eight enemies maximum. So if you hit like nine enemies, it's only going to leave a mark on eight enemies. And when you tap it, you're going to have to hit the enemies to leave a mark on them. And then when you hold it, um, you can like aim for the enemies and mark them from far. So it's going to be like easier to mark enemies. You can just hold the thing and scan enemies, you can say, and then it's going to do damage and mark them. Um, The benefit from holding is that it's going to be more easier to like mark enemies. And it's also going to give you like a higher range or if you want to mark like a specific enemy you can do it when you hold the elemental skill also it's going to deal um, more initial damage so the elemental skills damage is going to be higher when you hold that's going to come as a cost because when you hold the skill you're going to have a six seconds cooldown and when you tap it you're going to have a five seconds cooldown so for that extra range and accuracy you're going to have an extra one second of cooldown all right, so now moving on to the mark that it leaves on enemy. It's going to be called the Seed of Skanda. Now for that seed, um, you're going to leave it on eight enemies maximum. And when you hit one enemy, you're going to trigger the seed. And it's going to deal damage to all of the enemies marked. Even if you didn't hit them, you just need to hit one of them. You hit one of them and all of them are going to take damage. And it's going to last for 25 seconds. So you're pretty much going to have like a full uptime on her mark. Also, it's going to have like a cooldown of 2.5 seconds. So if you hit an enemy twice in 2.5 seconds, it's it's only going to trigger once. That's without your elemental burst buff that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But yeah, her elemental skill in a nutshell is that you're going to hit enemies, mark eight of them, leave a mark on them that's going to link them. And then when you hit one of them, it's going to deal dendro damage to them, to all of the enemies. You hit one enemy, all of them are going to take damage. Oh yeah, and that damage is going to scale with your attack mixed with elemental mastery. It scales better with elemental mastery, but attack is going to benefit your damage too. Now moving on to her elemental burst. Her elemental burst is going to create like a field and it's going to buff you based around the elements of your party members. It's not going to deal any damage of its own, but it's just going to buff your Nahida. So I'm going to explain the buffs very quick. So if you're using pyro characters, if you have one pyro, it's going to buff the damage from your elemental skills mark. So when you hit marks enemies, the damage that you get is going to be increased. At level 8, when you have one pyro character, the damage is going to be increased by 23%. And when you have two pyro Pyros, the damage is going to be increased by 35%. So that's pretty good. So as you guys can see, the damage bonus is not going to like double or anything like that. When you have one pyro, it's 23%. And when you have two pyros, it's not going to double. The damage increase is going to be 35% at level 8. So like the value per character is going to decrease. Now, when you're using one electron on your team, at level 8, you remember the um like the cooldown I said before, it was 2.5 seconds for her like elemental skills mark. When you're using one Electra on your team, that cooldown is going to be decreased by 0.4 seconds. And when you're using two electros, that cooldown is going to be decreased by 0.6 seconds. So, yeah, it's going to allow you to have like more hits from your elemental skills mark. And finally, when you have one Hydra on your team, it's going to increase the duration of your elemental burst. Um, at level 8, it's going to increase it by around like 5 seconds. And when you have two Hydros, it's going to increase it by around 8 seconds. I wouldn't really say it's that good because, you know, the uptime is generally pretty good in the first place. Place, but it's gonna allow you to be like more comfortable with your elemental burst. Now, as you guys can see here, the damage bonus from each element is going to cap out at only two characters. So it's not preferred to use like um, three Hydros with Nahida. Generally, you'd want to use like two from the same element and then one from the other element to get like the maximum benefits. It's not necessary though, but I'm saying like it's preferred. And by the way, you're going to have to stay inside like the thing that she creates to have the buffs. If you step outside, you're not going to get the buffs. But yeah, that's pretty much it for her elemental burst. It's basically just going to buff your elemental skill. 
All right, so now moving on to our passives. So the first passive is that when you use your elemental burst, the elemental mastery of the character on the field is going to be increased by 20% of the elemental mastery of the party member with the highest elemental mastery, with a maximum of 200. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but basically, um, let's say you have Nahida with the highest elemental mastery on your team. Let's say she have a thousand elemental mastery, and she has the highest elemental mastery of all of your team. Now the character on the field, whether it's Nahida or another character is going to gain 20% out of Nahida's elemental mastery as bonus elemental mastery. Let's say you switch to Nilo for example, Nilo is going to gain 20% out of Nahida's elemental mastery. So when Nahida has 1000, Nilo is going to gain 200 elemental mastery. If Nahida has 500, Nilo is going to gain 100 and so on. With a cap of 200, so even if Nahida has like 2000 elemental mastery, Nilo is not going to gain like 400, she's going to gain only 200. So it's capped out at 200. But yeah, it's going to give um, elemental mastery from the highest elemental mastery on your team. If you're using like Kazuha on your team, he's probably gonna have the highest. So Nilo is gonna gain elemental mastery from Kazuha. That's just an example. So yeah, that's it for the first passive. Now, the second passive is that for each point of elemental mastery Nahida have above 200, it's going to give you a 0.1 damage bonus and 0.03 crit rate to your elemental skill. You can have a maximum increase of 80% damage bonus and 24% crit rate. So it's going to buff your elemental skill based around your elemental mastery. That maximum is also going to have a cap. It's 80% damage bonus and 24% crit rate. You're going to reach that when you have a thousand elemental mastery. So anything above a thousand, you're not going to benefit from from it. But yeah, it's just more damage bonus and crit rate to your elemental skill. It's not going to benefit your auto attacks or anything like that. It's just for your elemental skill and that's it. Oh yeah, and it's only going to start counting after 200. So let's say you have like 500 elemental mastery. 500 minus 200 is going to be 300. You're going to gain damage bonus only from these um 300 elemental mastery. So you're going to gain 0.1 multiplied by 300. That's going to be 30% damage bonus for your elemental skill. And you're going to gain 0.0 3 multiplied by 300 that's going to be a 9 percent crit rate increase to your elemental skill so yeah it's only going to start counting after 200 and it's also going to cap out after a thousand because the maximum crit rate is going to be 24 percent and the maximum damage bonus is going to be 80 percent it's only going to benefit from the elemental mastery between 200 and a thousand so yeah that was the video guys if it helps you understand please don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you want to say anything leave it in the comments and see y'all in the next video peace